this is a correction to my video on Zobel's, I believe it was, um, where I was showing the Tiger circuit here. Since I did that video, I came across the manual, a newer manual, and the way he drew this circuit before kind of confused me with the point G, which I should have checked the wiring diagram after he goes to ground. It's not so much floating like I thought, so this is not a feedback, a local feedback loop for the triple. It is purely part of the Zobel. You can see in the newer drawing, he, uh... So Dan, Daniel Myers is talking to me from the grave. He's telling me, your video was not correct. And he redrew, his, he redrew it a few years later for a slightly revised version of the uh, schematic in this manual. And you see, he drew a number of things here. He, he kind of, uh... And this capacitor here was not on this old schematic going across the Zerner, but it is on the PC board. So that was wrong on his original schematic there. But mostly this kind of that threw me last time talking as part of the triple's uh, feedback loop for the triple itself. It's not true. It's uh, pure Zobel. This is a snubber, capacitor resistor in series. This is purely part of the output Zobel. So yeah, you can now have a more complicated circuit here, and it would give a, would be a Zobel in terms of having a, both you know capacitive and reduct and inductive path, so to speak, and resistive path. It would probably would be a wouldn't prevent much of a reflection. I mean, probably wouldn't make much of. It probably is a true Zobel in that it has a good impedance match to the uh, circuit. Um, what else in this thing is bass backwards? Oh, my biggest error on this drawing was I drew the, uh, I didn't draw them as Darlington. You know, I had Darlington written down, and then I looked at it and I erased Darlington. Go, They're not Darlingtons, but yeah, they are Darlingtons. I had this going to the wrong side previously in the previous video. I had it going to uh, the collector, not the emitter. They actually comes off the emitter, it's a Darlington. It's just drawn kind of funny. And in real life, in the real circuit, he's got a third transistor, and that's the crowbar uh, transistor. So I was trying to take those out to keep it simple. Still, it's pretty interesting. There's your feedback EQ, so to speak. And this is purely a Zobel. Here I kind of drew, you know, what Zobel is trying to affect trying to get rid of any sh uh, capacitive short across the line that the uh, speaker cable might present. If he had a real long speaker cable, real heavy gauge, and it was closely spaced, um, maybe you got some capacitance there. Um, you've also got, if the w speaker wire is running near metal, especially, you know, ferrous metal, that's going to have a lot different impedance to it, too. The cable, speaker cable, i got a speaker at the end here, this is going to have erased. But you can look at the speaker cable as being made of a series of resistors, the resistance of the wire itself, which is real low, but a slight capacitance between the two conductors. And if you really want to get into it, you could put an inductor in series with these resistors as a slight inductance, you know, and again, depending if it's running against metal, it will affect that component of that. So that's about it. I tried to track the phase through here. It's a little bit... You know, mostly you're doing your phase reversal when you're pulling against a resistor, um, like right here. So I think that's about it in terms of changes. I wanted to get this done because I'm going to race this dry board eventually. It's starting to get uh, damaged as it sits around, gets banged around, you know. Um, it does go to 17 volts in the input section. 40 volts and there's some resistance. There's also that Zerner, you know, Zerner and the capacitor actually. I also found the parts list, so I had to uh, put some more values in here, too. Uh, initially, I was wondering what kind of the impedance was here, if this was a floating bridge type of thing. And it goes to ground, of course. Wouldn't make sense to have it floating. Lose a lot of gain. So this is the write-up for the .01 Tiger. There was also a smaller version. It had two channels and one chassis. Ran at a lower voltage, plus minus 30, instead of plus minus 40. 
same schematic it's the 215 though and uh, I didn't even realize this was a 215 schematic so I started looking at the voltages and I saw something was screwy it's kind of odd they went down to 19 volts on the input of the uh, 215 but 17 volts on the Tiger generally you want only as much voltage as you need on this input section this is where most of your voltage gain is going to happen and you need to be able to slew you know a certain amount uh, a certain peak to peak voltage in order to drive the output so you have to have some voltage here but the lower you can make it the better because there'll be less noise in the uh, input section through the transistors and through the resistors and voltage also across a semiconductor will make it more noisy